Have you ever wondered why some people have swollen, painless legs, yet another group of people would have swollen but painful legs? Today, Karim's clinic delves deep into swelling of the leg, what that indicates. If your leg swells, what would that mean? There are two reasons why the legs would simply swell. These reasons are fluid buildup. If you have fluid in your leg, then the leg would swell. And number two, inflammation. That means if your leg is swollen as a result probably of irritation of the leg or injury, then it means the leg would swell. Those two reasons are the swellings we see in the legs. However, what does the swelling indicate? What is the problem behind the swelling? What causes this swelling? There are different diseases or different conditions that will cause the swelling. So if you look at a leg and you find out that the leg is swollen, don't just assume. The first reason is cellulitis. Cellulitis is a skin infection. This skin infection is caused by a bacterium. This bacterium comes from the group of the cocci. So we could have streptococcus or staphylococcus. I'm just mentioning briefly the bacteria and we are not going to delve deep into them. This bacteria enters your skin, especially the leg, through a crack. So if you have a crack, the bacteria would enter through the leg, through the crack, into your leg, and it will cause the leg to swell. So if you have cellulitis, just apart from your legs just swelling, how would you say, how would you conclude that you have cellulitis? There are some other symptoms that go along with that. So don't just have a swollen leg and then you go shouting that you have cellulitis. If your legs are swollen, and you want to know or you want to prove that you have cellulitis, then these are some symptoms that will get along with that. Your leg will be swollen, as we've said, and it will have red spots. Look out for red spots. Apart from the red spots, your leg will always feel warm. The temperature will increase. Compared to every other part of your body, you touch it, you feel it, you will feel the leg is warm, really swollen. And then generally the whole leg will be reddish. It will be reddish. Then if you look at the swollen leg, you realize there are dimples. Like the dimples that are found on the cheeks. You realize there are dimples in the leg. Then later on, the leg begins, begins to form blisters and then you feel fever. That is a conclusion enough that you have cellulitis. So you can always get, um, go into a um, health facility and tell them to check you if you have cellulitis. Don't be rude to the doctors. Number two, preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a condition that majorly affects pregnant women when they are just beginning their trimester about 20 weeks old or so pregnancy now what happens is that when the child is growing the child applies a lot of pressure because the child is growing there's a lot of pressure applied on the veins of the you know the blood vessels now this leads to high blood pressure to the mother the mother will experience high blood pressure now because of this high blood pressure there is blo slow blood circulation you can imagine if the blood vessel that supplies blood to the body is pressured there is some weight of the child that is you know pushing it it means it will not be in a position to circulate blood efficiently and sufficiently. It means that the blood circulation will slow down. So what happens when the blood circulation slows down? 
where will this blood go to? That is what will, is, will now lead to what we call fluid build up in your legs. So, when am I supposed to say that I have pre- preeclampsia? I say so when, number one, I am pregnant. It therefore goes without saying that men should not say that they have preeclampsia. It is only women who should say so because women carry pregnancy. But again, just because you're pregnant doesn't mean that you'll have preeclampsia. A lot of women don't experience that. So, when do you say you now you have it? Apart from being pregnant, you will experience headache. And it is a frequent headache that is too much. You will also experience a problem with your vision. You will realize you are sensitive to light. You can't open your eye well when there is um, light. And then there is blurriness in your vision. You can't see things clearly. You want to strain to read. You want to strain to do to see far. So that is what we call preeclampsia. Number three, medication. There are medications that when you use for a long period of time lead to your leg swell. There are also the side effects of the prescription drugs. For instance, there are medicines that we use. We take them over the counter, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Those drugs that take care of inflammations like brufen. If you use brufen too much, your legs would swell. Somebody is asking themselves, but I've been using it and I'm not seeing the leg swelling. It's coming, it's along the way. Stop using them. And if you're supposed to use them, use them sparingly. To mean, do not use them too much. Do not prolong their use. Every time you have an issue, it's about brufen. Number two, aspirin. Aspirin is a drug that has been used since time immemorial. Aspirin, too much of the use, too much of its use would actually lead to your leg swelling. Naproxen is another medication that you are supposed to take care of when you are using it too much. And finally, um, Selecosib. Selecosib, if you go to a shop, it is known as Celebrex. That is the selling name. So these medications, please, if you can't avoid them, then kindly use them in a low quantity. Don't overdo them. The, the next thing is diabetes drugs. There are diabetes drugs that if you are using, your legs would swell. Now, I want to point out that when your legs are swelling and you are diabetic, don't just assume that because you are using diabetic um, diabetes drugs, then... It is them that have caused the problem. There are two main drugs, the Ectos and the Avendia. Those ones cause problems. These are drugs that are used for type 2 diabetes. So if you're using them and you see the swelling in your leg, you should not get too much worried. You know that is a side effect of that particular drug. Hormones, the, the hormone medications as well. This brings me to birth control pills. Ladies, birth control pills have what we call the estrogen and some others have the progesterone. These ones would lead to the swelling of your leg. They would lead to build up of fluids in your legs. So do not overuse them. We will have another video that explains the effects of the morning after pill or what we call the e-pill, including one effect is what you call ectopic pregnancy. You use this birth control uh, pills in a way that is not required, that is not recommended. You will have what we call ectopic pregnancy, the pregnancy that implants at the fallopian tube. When it grows to three months, it bursts and you also die. Some other medications are medications of uh, high blood pressure like the amlodipine. Amlodipine will make sure that your legs swell, will cause swelling to your legs. So if you're using amlodipine and you realize uh, your leg is swollen, 
always know that is the issue. So um, there are people who use enalaprin. I've not seen enalaprin causing leg swells. Yeah. Um, also, there are some antidepressant. If you are on antidepressant, always watch out. If you are consuming them, then your leg can swell. So if you realize your leg is swollen and you are on medication, first of all, confirm if the medications you are consuming can lead to the swelling of the leg. If the medications you are consuming can't make the leg swell, then it means you have some other issues because there are people who are on antidepressant and they're using medicines that can that um, the side effects do not include swelling of the leg. So when I say antidepressants, not all, but some. So if you are on antidepressants and your leg is swollen, check if you are using tricyclics or what we call monoamine oxidase inhibitors. If you are not using the two, then you are safe in that it is not your medication that has caused your legs to swell. You have some other issues. Next, if you have swollen legs, consider thinking about kidney problems. If your kidney is not working properly, and we can explain this, the kidney is supposed to give us urine. In, 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 in a basic explanation, that is what we expect our kidneys to do, to give us urine. So it means it is filtering the urine out. What is urine? Water. And some other waste material. So if the kidney is not working properly, meaning it is not taking out the urine and filtering out the urine and also filtering out the waste products, then it is not working properly. So in such a situation, these waste products and fluid will remain in the blood. So when they remain in the blood, where do we expect them to go to? Straight away to our legs and even arms. So that means you have kidney issues. If you realize you have a swollen leg, then you have kidney issues. But don't just conclude that you have kidney issues if your legs are swollen. There are some other symptoms that you're supposed to consider. Your arms need to be swollen. Yes. You will get fatigued. You will be very tired. You will feel so, so tired. Another thing that is very important you will have a lot of thirst too much thirst you want to drink water again and again and again and then at one point you will have nausea and shortness of breath so if you have those ones then you can now consider the kidney problems uh, for diagnosis but if you just have a swollen leg don't run that you have kidney issues the kidney issues will come alongside the swollen leg will come alongside some other symptoms and um, for you to conclude that you have kidney problems. Then there is congestive heart failure. If your leg is swollen, then you could also be having congestive heart failure. What, is, what does this mean? Let me explain this. When the heart becomes too weak to pump all the blood that is required by the body, it means there is some blood that is not being pumped. Where does that result to? Your legs. There will be fluid build up. So when do I say that now I have congestive heart failure? When you realize that you are fatigued apart from the swelling, you have fatigue and you have short shortness of breath. Somebody is already thinking, then what is the difference between kidney problems and congestive heart failure? Now, that's why you need to go ahead and find it out with a health facility. So that it's, you know, these symptoms, signs and symptoms, they overlap. It doesn't mean that when you have um, fatigue, it's only congestive heart failure. You could have fatigue and you have kidney problems. So it is very always easier to know once you know these symptoms once you know more about the swelling of the legs you can easily tell 
that you know what i think i have these two diseases heart failure a congestive heart failure and kidney problems then from there you when you go to a doctor it will now be easier for them to isolate which one exactly do you have other things that would cause swelling of the legs are things like overweight if you are obese or you are overweight then your legs would swell there are people who sit too much in the office for too long now sitting for too long would cause leg swell if you have arthritis now arthritis is now the inflammation of the joints so your joint the, for instance the knee joint would get inflamed it would swell then as a result it spreads down to the rest of your leg so that is what we call arthritis so arthritis can also be a reason why um uh, your leg is swollen however arthritis attacks several joints in your body so it's always easier to know that now this is arthritis this is not arthritis also when you stand for long people who stand for long also suffer the leg swell this is my punchline if you realize you have all these symptoms and you are suspecting that you have one of the diseases that i've mentioned or one of the conditions that i've mentioned don't self medicate there are things that you can self medicate and there are those that you can't self medicate buying drugs over the counter is okay however buy drugs that you know how they function if you just go buying drugs because you had somebody say that this drug can work miracles for you or for your disease then you are wrong always find out the kind of medication you are buying over the counter get your doctor ask a doctor that is close to you to explain to you how a particular drug works so that you don't just get a prescription from anybody and then you conclude once and for all that that drug um, will work for you ladies and gentlemen i say thank you for listening to me if you find this content helpful then consider subscribing kindly like my videos so that they are recommended to many more 